The Samurai, introduced in the United States in 1985, was an immediate success. 150,000 were sold in three years. But in 1988, Consumers Union published an article claiming that the Suzuki Samurai rolls over too easily and rated it not acceptable. This lawsuit was filed in 1996 after Consumers Union repeated and exploited accusations it originally leveled in 1988 about the Suzuki Samurai. In its 60th anniversary issue, published in January 1996, Consumer Reports magazine singled out the Suzuki Samurai as the prime example of a not acceptable safety hazard that the magazine prides itself on exposing. The magazine reprinted its photograph of the Samurai tipping up on two wheels and bragged that in its 1988 tests, it had discovered the Samurai easily rolls over. The Suzuki Samurai was also the only product specifically mentioned by name in the CU President's Memo to Members and appeared in italics for emphasis. These statements and similar ones made around 1996 have been challenged by Suzuki and all are at issue in this lawsuit. CU statements about the Samurai are based on a series of driving maneuvers conducted in the spring of 1988. To begin with, four SUVs, including the Samurai, were evaluated by CU's professional test drivers on a standard course that it had relied upon for 15 years. The Suzuki Samurai ran what CU officials called a very stringent course a total of 37 times. It not only remained stable, but also was rated the most maneuverable of all the vehicles tested. From CU's own video footage, the following is a sample of different runs by CU's professional drivers on the standard course. most experienced CU test driver, Kevin Sheehan, drove the Samurai through the course 16 times, reaching speeds over 50 miles per hour, without its tires ever leaving the ground. In the official test driver log, Sheehan noted the Samurai was easy to control and rated it as high as any vehicle he tested that day.
test driver Richard Small took the wheel for another 21 runs. The Samurai remained stable. Small gave the Samurai the highest possible rating, a 5 plus, and noted in the driver's log, no real problem. At this point, had CU followed the practice it had in place for the past 15 years, the planned testing of the Samurai would have been complete. The Samurai would have received the highest rating of all the SUVs tested that day. But that didn't happen. The Samurai rollover story was so significant to CU that for the first time in its history of auto testing, both editorial director Erwin Landau and technical director David Pittle had come to witness the events firsthand. After CU's regular test drivers did not tip the Samurai, an eyewitness said Landau told driver Sheehan, if you can't find someone to roll this car, I will. Piddle himself took the driver's seat. After nine runs without tipping, he steered the Samurai even more aggressively than called for by CU's already very stringent and long-established maneuver. As a result, he got the Samurai's wheels to lift off the ground. The videotape captured the sound of CU employees cheering. Pittle instructed auto test personnel to change the course to duplicate the driving maneuver he made to tip the Samurai. Six days later, CU ran the Samurai through the modified course, but still had trouble getting it to tip up. Even on the new course, it took 15 runs before the Samurai tipped. Once again, there are sounds of satisfaction by CU employees. That's it. That looks pretty good. When another driver achieves a second tip up, a CU employee enthusiastically shouts congratulations. <laughs> Two weeks later, it's time for the publicity shoot. But CU drivers again have trouble getting the samurai to tip for the camera. Pittle verbally expresses his exasperation about the situation. On June 2, 1988, Consumers Union holds a press conference to announce its findings. CU Technical Director David Pittle spoke to the news media. We've called this press conference to announce some important results of our tests on four utility vehicles. Those tests demonstrate that the Suzuki Samurai has an unusually high propensity to roll over while performing an accident avoidance maneuver that could be demanded suddenly of any driver during routine driving. CU officials provided the news media with the article about the Samurai, a diagram of the modified course, and an edited video of the maneuvers. CU withheld from the public, Suzuki, and the federal government details of its test procedures, driver's logs, and raw footage of the vehicle runs, 
until after this lawsuit was filed. CU believes the Samurai's performance presents an unreasonable risk of harm to the consumer and thus rates the Suzuki Samurai as not acceptable. Although CU portrayed its analysis as objective, the Samurai was put to the test on two separate courses 71 times. 42 times more than the Isuzu Trooper II, 36 times more than the Jeep Cherokee, and 17 times more than the Jeep Wrangler. And you got to know, these are very limited steering inputs. This is not turning the wheel like a stunt driver might do to try to whip around and head the other direction in the shortest possible distance. This is a very benign kind of maneuver. Suzuki's outside experts replicated the steering maneuvers necessary to tip up vehicles on CU's modified course. You've got to know, these are very limited steering inputs. This is not turning the wheel like a stunt driver might do to try to whip around and head the other direction. Pittle has since acknowledged that his characterization of the steering inputs at the press conference was not accurate. CU's most seasoned test driver said the maneuver was not benign, but sudden and violent. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration refused to recall the Suzuki Samurai. Instead, it rejected CU's conclusions, as did other government safety agencies worldwide, including Great Britain, New Zealand, Switzerland, and the Netherlands. The Samurai continued to be sold in more than 100 countries. But in the wake of CU's attack on the Samurai in 1988, the vehicle's annual sales in the United States plunged precipitously from about 80,000 in 1987 to approximately 5,000 in 1989. Suzuki stopped selling the Samurai in the United States by 1995, but CU's relentless disparagement of the Samurai has caused the company to suffer nearly $60 million in damages since 1994 relating to lost sales of other Suzuki vehicles. For years, CU has exploited its disparaging samurai story and photographs to raise money, boost sales, and attract new subscribers. For example, in November 1988, Consumers Union featured the Suzuki Samurai prominently in a solicitation letter to raise funds for its new headquarters. The 1988 Samurai story, in fact, generated more publicity for CU than any story it had previously published. And CU continued to boast about its Samurai testing for years in Consumer Reports magazine, promotional material, and its 1996 multimedia CD called Cars, the Essential Guide for Buyers and Owners. Consumer Reports magazine bragged to its readers that it was responsible for wiping out one of the most popular and, at $8,045, the most affordable SUVs on the road. 